Next email we have comes to us from Zach from Highland Park, Illinois. Howdy, dudes. I'm curious as I look around at the games industry today, what the fuck has happened? <laughs> I can't trust a single game journalist anymore. And thanks to Gamergate 2, it seems like 99.9% of them have let their masks slip. And now it's abundantly clear a lot more of them are pushing the injection of politics and other messaging into gaming. I just want to read someone's review and find out if the game is good or bad, not have someone tell me I'm a bad person because of the color of my skin is white or because I'm a straight white male who enjoys games that give me a character that tells a story. I don't need to see myself in the character. It's not what I come to games for. When does this madness end? Do we ever get back to just talking about if a game is good or bad? Do you think inevitably YouTubers will just take over the space from access media? Regardless, it's had me playing less and less games lately. I used to love this hobby. Now I kind of loathe what it's become. Anyone else feel like me out there? Or is it just me? Um, I understand where he's coming from. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. I think I think the most important thing you need to realize is that none of these people are journalists anymore. That's not no, what this no. is anymore. This is all actually, op-ed pieces about you. If you don't like this game, you should feel bad about yourself. The, I think the moment I had the realization of that was the moment of because I w- I wasn't mad at the person. So it's the Alyssa Mercante. Like she got up on the the couch and she had her Frost 2.0 sure. moment. I wasn't mad at that because that's what I expect out of that person. Right. Let's be fair. What I was mad about is where it took place. The fucking giant bomb couch. Now, again, giant bomb is not what giant bomb used to be. None of those original people are there anymore. But it's the idea of what it is. It's fucking giant bomb. That would never have happened under Jeff Gersman. No. Never. <laughs> like they never would have like that whole scenario would have never occurred. And it's just that was where it occurred to me. I'm like, wow, this this whole idea of like sitting down and watching these, like maybe outside of IGN, which still kind of like, even though IGN does have their articles once in a while where you look at and roll your eyes, for the most part, like I can at least watch something that they produce and not have that experience. Yeah. IGN for the most Whereas part like, is okay. Right. Yeah. It just kind of seems like you know, it's whatever. We're still talking about for, games for one. It's it's OK, because it's one of the la- the few like last game sites that actually puts out information throughout the day. And also are so. the monopoly. Of, well, of I mean, that, the, no. the argument would be like GameSpot <laughs> is the other one. But GameSpot is a shell of what it used to be. Yeah, it, barely it is. Has a lot of those content. people left. Everybody's gone. Um, yeah, it's like IGN. IGN's fine, but. Every so often, there's an op-ed piece about why you should feel bad, and because and because it's an op-ed piece, gee, we better turn off comments time. real quick because mm-hmm. anybody who has a different opinion is wrong. Yeah, like, they're not uh, the people who write these things aren't allowed to be wrong. So this isn't journalism. Yeah. I think the other thing that's changed more now, as opposed to like a decade ago, and this is the dumb part of it, is it's easier now, even though this existed 10 years ago, it's easier now for people to get on Twitter and just start attacking. Yeah, because we see this happen all the time. Like we're li- literally like these journalists are attacking their own fan bases because, hey, this person doesn't agree with their opinion on this or that. It has nothing to do with the video game. Yeah, the problem is, and we, we talked about this, when we talked about like the doctor disrespect garbage is, yeah, there are people that fall into these odd parasocial relationships and like you know quote unquote being simps for these people who will go to the ends of the earth to defend someone they've never met (laughs) for the purpose of what that's the craziest part of the goal yeah Yeah. do you think that this person is going to acknowledge you and be like wow we're we're best friends now that person doesn't give two shits about you no they don't they don't care you're a number not at all no but it's just, it just seems like every day there's another one. There was one more recently where I, uh, I'm i trying. I can't remember the person it is, but it is somebody from Kind of Funny. It's not Greg Miller. It's one of the other people that are there. But I saw him like this person like start attacking somebody on Twitter because they had a different opinion about something in, in games related. And it was just one of those things where I'm just like, really? Like somebody from Kind of Funny, which is supposedly, as I see it all the time, they talk about like the kind of bunny, be- kind of funny best friends and all that, you know, where it's like they're this very welcoming group of gamers and stuff. It seemed kind of just like the complete opposite of that. So where I was like, 
wow, that's really strange for this person. And it's like, it's not even that they're attacking this person. It's like the level of like almost hatred, it seems, where it's like, it really seems like this person doesn't want to be writing about video games. No. Yeah. So, and a lot of them, I know that's the case. So, well, and you also get this thing where other other journalists don't want to disagree with the other ones because they oh, no. don't want to start the fight against them. And then, oops, they end up on the wrong side. Like, think about think about when she had her her moment on the couch. <laughs> and imagine daring to be the one person in that room who doesn't agree. Uh, oh, I know. Imagine, imagine being the one person in that room who says, this is ridiculous. Like, you are losing it. Threatening, threatening people uh, with violence. There has, there has to be at least one person that was sitting Absolutely. on that couch. That did not agree and just sat there. One and went person along with in that it. room probably maybe didn't it's think... the mustache dude because people love pointing that guy's mustache but, out. But <laughs> well, there was at least one person in that room I can guarantee you didn't think that physically fighting someone was the solution to her problems. <laughs> no, and she somehow thought it did. And then you know you get the ones in that room who come out and say I was in that room and I totally support her. Or Jeff Grubb who he seems to be losing his mind. He's lost his mind. Right. He's <laughs> I 100 agree. Some hole and he's not yeah. coming back out. No, And it's because they have their own platform where they can say whatever they want and they just keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it and keep doing it. Fuck the rules. Fuck human decency. Fuck everything. And that was and that was my thing was, like I said, I was more offended that it was Giant Bomb. But that was when I had that realization of like, it's not the Giant Bomb that, you know, man, gone for a while that died. That died a couple of years ago when they all left Four of them left. Yeah, yeah, it did, and then Jeff was well, there had, for the but transition. They had to go through but that shuffle period, but they brought people in and they brought people out, and, it and then still was somebody else awkward. left, and then it yeah. flipped them around. And it's like, I yeah. just, what even is it anymore? I mean, whatever. I support Jeff just sitting in his house playing NES games now. It kind of makes the most sense <laughs> like, to me now, man. Like a guy who <laughs> detached himself from everybody else, hangs out, and does his own shit. You want to be a part he's of still, it, right? Like the thing is, he still gets codes, and and we'll talk about like recent games and stuff. But a lot of the stuff he does, he's been doing video games for thirty he's, years. He's been playing. I was going to mention this. He's been playing some like uh, it's a. It was over in Europe. It did not come out here. It's a PS2 like extreme sports game, like a skateboarding game oh, or okay. something called Roland. And uh, that's pretty I've, cool. I, I, I don't know if I've ever heard of it, but I'm not surprised. Europe got a whole that's bunch pretty of cool. shit we never heard. <laughs> so, but like, that's the point is like, he's kind of carved out his own niche. Right. And that's fine. Well, and the thing, the next liner dudes have carved out their own niche too. The thing, the thing that about kind of like calling this journalism is journalism to me involves investigating a topic, listening to both sides of the topic, showing both, sides showing both topic. sides of the topic, and then writing it in a way where your opinions don't, aren't the driving force of the article exactly so but every one of these things that you read about it's all Resident Evil 5 pieces. can't be remade it's far too racist you did no research on how the game was originally made how the times have changed and what needs to be updated and what can stay no. and what the whole point of the game was you've done no ins- you you took a game <laughs> released in 2005 is that when that game came out six uh 2009 okay 2009 i'm thinking of four i think but yeah you're th- you're taking a game released in 2009 when the political climate and just like a lot of this stuff was far different and you're saying that because of the way this game was made it can't be remade now i was watching a tv show today where i let we talk about it all the time where it's like things you can't say anymore Oh, yeah. This TV show was on. I was watching on Peacock. It's you know the show Psych. Yeah. Okay, I'm watching an episode of that today on Peacock, and one guy makes a joke about the two main guys. He goes, "What are you guys? What are you guys doing? Are you being gay?" And I just was just yeah. like, "Holy shit!" Because uh, you can say that it's today. impossible, yeah. but it's still here. It's yeah. not going anywhere. It didn't mean that at the time. Like, no, I'm just. <laughs> I don't even know where I'm going with it. I'm just so tired. I'm so tired of this oh, shit. No, we all are. It's just like, like, I don't understand why we can't just get back to being adults and just realize, like, you don't you don't have to say those kind of things anymore, but that is what it was then. Why like, can't I don't need a just message be to tell me. Yeah, like, why why can't a review just be a review? Why can't you just tell me that the Elden Ring DLC is worth my time or not? Remember when they used to right. break down <laughs> reviews would be like, gameplay, graphics. Uh, yeah. We're talking like audio, Game Pro like days. Is what you're saying, yeah. days. Where they would literally break it down my like category and tell yeah. you this, and then they would have a category at the bottom. It was like, is the game fun or not? 
That was yeah, like the thing. That was one literally one of the categories yes. was fun yeah, factor. Yeah, it's fun. That's mm-hmm. all we want from game reviews now. I don't need to know the yeah. geopolitical sciences behind uh me shooting a zombie in a foreign country. <laughs> like what the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. God forbid that right, game no. t- took place in Africa. Where should we set it now? Iceland? Where all the people are white. What I always like to go back to is the uh, Kotaku PS5 review, which just was all about the 2020 election. Right. Like, what and are you talking about? Literally nothing to do about the PS5. Like, I'm here just to know if the PS5 is worth it, man. I don't give a fuck about <laughs> right. like what you're talking That's about. That's why, here. like, it's funny, but you know, you and I, I think we both read Push Square and, and Pure Xbox a lot because while they're quote unquote biased towards those systems but that's the point right. of it though but they that also is, will if a game sucks they'll say it sucks oh they'll straight up tell you where game game's first send it a three they hate it yeah and you know what i've played a lot of it i get it it's fine i get it but i like those sites because even i mean that's the point of it is you're supposed to pick like okay this one's for playstation news this one's for xbox news so obviously they're going to be biased for those systems but what i like about those sites and a lot of them will run the same news article i mean they're right. owned they're by the, the same, same company, entity right. but Right. But what I like about it is it's just what you want it to be. It's the news article, and it tells you what the news Here's is. Here's some information. Or it's a review need. of the game. Here's a link to the trailer. Tell you about the game. They'll sometimes, yeah. sometimes, and the other thing is sometimes they'll, they will do opinion pieces, and they will put a mm-hmm. giant thing in, on it that says opinion. So you yeah. automatically, you know off the jump, oh, I don't, if I don't want an opinion on it, I don't need to read it. Yeah. If I did an IGN article, you could be tra- halfway through. All of a sudden, it turns into something else. All of a sudden, you're turning the Elden Ring review into like your personal experiences with online uh, hate that you created, right? <laughs> yourself, like, you know, fucking like what? Ridiculous. Do you know that's the newest thing? Yes, I know. Going back on now, it's like, oh, everybody else is out to get me. Like, no, you started this. Right. You went. You literally went on the internet and said, "Come fight me at any time." Right. And then when people offer to fight you, you said, "Nah, no thanks." You had people legitimately offer to fight you for charity. Right. No thanks. Which is like, no, not a physical street fight. Charity. No. <laughs> No, thank like, you. It'd just be like, oh no, I've been harassed the last four months. No, yeah, like, no. Get, get over Sit yourself. Down. It's just, it's ridiculous. So I hope it ends. I hope it. I hope it ends at some point. And the other thing I will say too is like, I do think the future is. I think at some point it will fully be taken over by YouTubers yeah, there, and that kind. Of, YouTubers and Patreon. Yeah, we're halfway there because that's what it is. We're already halfway there. A lot of those people have already done that. So and that's working. Like that has worked. You kind of find your niche of a person you like on YouTube that reviews games or does new stuff and you go with it and it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So 